being uh, a perfectionist, kind of perfectionist, and never delivering uh, on anything on time. So, <laughs> I don't. Are you really going to? Uh, and the plans now? Do the plans call for all these all these records to come out in one year, or is this going to be something until two thousand ten? Yeah, two thousand thirty, two thousand thirty five. <laughs> okay, yeah. God. you're no. not churning all of these yeah, out exactly. for a year. Okay, you know, um, the one thing about uh, not really being supported by a record label mm-hmm. is that you don't feel any obligation to to get anything done you know we've never been supported by victory for the most part and you know we can't stand or i mean maybe i should speak you know uh in the uh, just for myself i can't stand being on victory records and you know i've i've i'd love to get off the label um but uh you know i feel no obligation to to rush things or to work things into their into their schedules because you know they don't really bother to work out anything for us so you know i i I view streetlight as very much an independent band and because of that uh we don't have uh any schedules except for the ones that we impose on ourselves and we don't even stick to those (laughs) so so um yeah it's going to be very much you know as it gets finished that being said you know i can understand people's frustrations both in the band and in terms of fans um who are the only two groups that i really feel that any, any responsibility to you know um that they, they do get frustrated that it takes so long with things. So we are going to try to move along the first record to have it out in uh, early 2009. And uh, that should that should come out right around the same time as one or two of the other ones from the uh, the mystery groups, <laughs> just because those are a lot easier to record. Are they are, are the mystery groups, are they going to be like kind of like with the ad hoc ensemble, like three guys from the band? Yeah, some just, things like that. Like, uh, yeah. yeah, maybe some a guest musician or two, that kind of thing. Okay. Um, but just, you know, different actually way different from from streetlight stuff different enough where it couldn't be considered a streetlight record you know <clears throat> which is unusual because you're kind of like forward in all directions anyway how's that well and that you don't like i said you don't have one particular that template you don't have a template yeah yeah, yeah yeah so it seems that why it seems that the way you've you framed Streetlight as it can do anything. You can go out and you can play, you can play like, uh, you know, Algerian Rye if you want to. You can go out and play <laughs> Gypsy, you know, yeah, Flamenco. Yeah. You can, I mean, within the context of what you do. Yeah, yeah, so definitely. I'm just kind of wondering what is the, uh, I, think, I mean, essentially, what is the what is the need for doing it as several different several different projects in addition to uh, just yeah. because I mean, you know, I love playing, uh, I love playing other people's music, you know, songs I grew up on and songs I love. Uh, but say there's a song that just absolutely can't be done or, or doesn't feel right or or it would be too much a repetition of what the original was with guitar, bass, drums, horns, for example. You know, so then, you know, maybe I'll grab a, uh, you know, a djembe and, uh, you know, some sort of harp and sing over that. <laughs> you know what I mean? So that's that's the kind of stuff we're doing for the other projects, you know, like stripped down or just a completely different instrumentation or feel from Streetlight and, okay. and Acoustic Bandits. And, and essentially the whole purpose of the 99 Songs of Revolution, yep. the purpose of the whole project, is, is, it all, is it essentially, is it all covers or is it going to be... It's all, it's all covers. Okay, it's all it's technically all covers. covers. It's all, right. all covers, yeah. And it's going to be the breadth of everything from... Every genre, you know, pretty much, you know, I've been keeping a little ledger. I'm, I'm always jotting down songs that I hear or songs that I like since I was a little kid, so... I mean, they're gonna they're gonna be pretty random. Um, there's gonna be there might be a song on there that came out in the last year. There might be a song out there that might be you know a traditional hymn from the late 1800s. You know, just pretty much anything. Uh, you know, maybe it should be noted that we will stay away from you know obviously like other ska you know even even ska or punk rock bands that influenced us. We're gonna stay away from from those from those bands just because that would be too too easy. Um, we might do some songs, but definitely. Uh, kind of turn them on their heads and kind of you know do them almost in the uh, the musical opposite way of of the originals. So okay, so uh, so all right, give me an exclusive. What do you what do you what, what do you think is the most uh what's what's the, what's the most kind of I can't believe they covered that. Which one do you think would be currently the most shocking? Um, Your version of Freebird. What. You know? <laughs> I'm thinking. Is there something that's completely out of left field that you um, totally love, and people are going to go, "What the hell's going through his head when he came up with that?" On the on the record, on the first one, the Streetlight one. I'm trying to think. 
Actually, no, I don't want to say. Oh, come on. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I don't want to say. And, you know, it, it frustrates me in general with, you know, with the whole label thing. Like, they, you know, they leak the track listing and then they, they leak the, the actual, you know, the, the record comes out because of radio promos like a month beforehand. And I've always been against that. I've, and, you know, much to the uh, frustration of a lot of our fans who, you know, they want to they wanna know what's going on and what we're doing, you know, as soon as we think of it. But uh, we've always been a band that kind of, I guess, frustrates people through, um, through kind of being secretive, you know, we, we're, gotcha. we're, you know, okay. we're, we don't, we don't really do the whole MySpace thing. We don't really do the, you know, video journal thing. We don't, you know, we don't want to. You don't put yourself out there. Yeah, man. yeah, yeah. We have no interest in doing that. Into and and it's sad because, uh, you know, from from observing the the world of music, a lot, a lot of times, um, the more successful bands they they have done that, or maybe they have to do that to kind of become successful, you know, and kind of just kind of. I mean, in, in my opinion, it's kind of a selling your soul type thing. You know, I, I have, I'm very private, you know, sure. in, in general and even within the band and just, you know, and I don't want to, despite what uh, people who have the best interests of the band uh, in mind have suggested, I just, I'm just not interested in that. I'd rather grow it organically over the years than, than you know, kind of let the cameras on to the, to the bus or the RV and be like, yeah, so this is... The toothpaste we use and we love Gatorade and you know yeah. these are the magazines we read and you know I want to share my life with everyone <laughs> you know we don't really need that validation We're, I mean yeah it's the whole type of uh, the whole type of life journalization yeah, yeah. just I just and of, it's kind of like the whoring out of everything where there's no nothing sacred anymore and there's no mystery left and uh, I mean and yeah, not just, I mean that's that yeah, is a big consideration there's yeah. no mystery left because and, I remember th those things where you get some punk band like wow I wonder what you know I wonder what Black Flag are doing right now yeah yeah <laughs> but it's, I mean? and it's not it's not mystery for the sake of mystery though it's just mystery for it's mystery because you know we're human beings who don't base our lives around becoming you know a hot topic band or like you know some sort of like you know huge band or whatever like you know, everyone draws their own line, and you know, I'm not judging anyone for the most part. Well, maybe I'm judging them a little bit, but <laughs> everyone, you can everyone, judge whoever you want to. <laughs> damn it, go ahead. Everyone, you know, everyone draws their own line wherever they 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 choose, um, and mine just happens to be very close to my toes. <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, you, and admittedly, there is nothing wrong with that. I guess it's all it depends. On, I should probably ask you this then: Does uh, does Streetlight Manifest does Streetlight Manifesto have a shelf life? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think every band has a shelf life, and I think it all comes down to having the um, having the, the backbone and having the the almost like the, the almost the respect for the fans to pull the plug when when you feel it's necessary. I mean, look, you know, I'd be lying if I didn't say that there were times when I, you know, middle of a tour or middle of recording or something, I just look down at everything and I say. I don't want to do this. I hate this band. I hate everyone in the band. You know, I hate everything about it. I hate everyone involved. I don't want to step on a stage again, you know? And then, but you know, there's this constant pressure to have this like big smile on your face. And you know, all these bands are like, Oh, we're having a blast. This is so crazy. This is such a good time. Yada, yada. And it is, it is a good time, you know, very often, but you know, often, especially, you know, people of my psychological persuasion, <laughs> uh, will have, you know, periods of, of, you know, just completely mind numbingly depre mind numbing depression where you just can't stand anything around you and that includes everything you've done with your band. Then the important thing is, you know, once once that really sets in and doesn't go away after a couple of days or, you know, after the the, the clouds pass, once you, you feel that you're kind of faking it, then it's time to to give it up. And, you know, I, I think everyone in the band probably understands and is worried, worried that that day for me it might show up and you know anytime it's not going to I don't think you know but um you know the, the I think the right thing to do in that situation would be to end the band regardless of how many records are left in your contract or regardless of you know management pressuring you to do this or that or you know regardless of of, of anything if you're not feeling it if you're not you know where you need to be to, to make the music you're making and you're betraying everyone by continuing. So, and you're also betraying your own aesthetic aspirations in most the first of all. place. I yeah, mean, if you're phoning it in, I mean, yeah, what's the exactly. point? Exactly. Yeah, and I think so many bands. You know, I'm not going to name any bands. I mean, there are, there are bands that you know that have been around for 10, 15, 20 years. Who you can you can I mean you you, you can't really fake it. You know, um, you can try, and you might fool some people, but most people I think can can sense when you are phoning it in. Um, there are bands that are justified to be around 10, 15 years later, 
Um, but then some bands, you could tell the dudes are worried that if the band breaks up or if the, the machine stops chugging along, they're going to have to get a job at Dairy Queen and that scares, the sh that scares, that scares them lifeless and they just sure. keep on going on. And I like to think, you know, and you know, who knows though, but I'd like to think I'll be, I'll be, um, brave enough to look everyone in the eye and just be like, okay, this is it. And this is the last one. This is, you know, it can't go on anymore. And I'm, you know, and it, it's really awkward too, because I, I went through a similar situation with catch 22 and it's, and it's really awkward when it's almost worse when you're the singer, songwriter, guitarist guy, uh, like, you know, whether or not you like it, the, the front, you you're know, the focal thing. Yeah. yeah the, 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 the main dude, it sucks because you've got that extra worry on your shoulders where, it, you know, that, that guilt, not only that you're like kind of ditching the fans, but more so that you're, you're, you're ditching the guys that you've been living with for the last like X amount of years, you know? So it's, but once again, like, you know, when, when you feel it's time to go, you got to go, you know, you got to move on. It, it, I'm not saying like quit music, but just kind of, you know, end that band sure. or, or even change genres or whatever, you know, like kind of move on. So. No, absolutely. Cause nobody wants to phone it in. I mean, yeah. you know, I would hope that if your record started to sound like Nickelback, you would, exactly. you would, Go off into the sunset. <laughs> definitely, definitely. <laughs> hopefully before that. Or hopefully somebody will push you into the sunset. Exactly, yeah, yeah. Hey, thanks for coming by. Thank you. It's really good It's really good chatting with you and, and, and listening to music and stuff, and I wish you all the best of luck. Thank you very much. What Likewise. do you want to wrap this thing up with? Um, I'm going to do an old one. I'm going to do uh, something off of uh, uh, Catch 22's Casey Nights. Um, this is a song I wrote about a, a bully, more or less. I mean, back then I didn't have the... Uh, the songwriting chops to focus on one thing throughout the whole song, but this is a song that I kind of wrote uh, with the name of a of a of a kid from uh, from town in mind. So it's called uh, "Dear Sergio." I should probably tune, huh? <laughs> Case I'm, I'm about as real as I get. <laughs> All right, here we go again. And again. You'll never run away from yourself I know it's hard but you've been there Before you know you're gonna be there again I don't care what the stars may say They always feed the bullshit to me It's kinda sad how you lost what you had You know you're gonna be there I'm also notorious for forgetting my lyrics <laughs> I'm also notorious for forgetting my lyrics Uh... I'm just going to improvise if I don't remember. <laughs> run, 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 all you do is run, but you'll never run away from yourself. Now it's hard, but you've been there before you know you're gonna be there again I don't care what the stars may say, they always feed the bullshit to me It's kinda sad how you lost what you had, you're never gonna have it again And so I said, hey, Sergio, it's getting kinda hard in here And so I said, hey, Sergio, you gotta get us out of here and so I said, hey, na 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 Every 
other day You don't care what they say They always leave you two steps behind Try small but it'll last for a while They always send you back to the start Eeny, meeny, money, more than shit on anyone you know And then they leave you there all alone You wish you'd stop but they never give up And you know deep inside that you're stuck And so I said, hey, Sergio It's getting kinda hot in here And I said, hey, Sergio You gotta get us out of here So I said, hey, na 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 Listening to Thomas Kalnoki from Street Light Manifesto. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you for having me. Thanks for thanks for hanging out and all that stuff. And sure. I hope it wasn't that wasn't too difficult. No, I like no. to I like to think of myself as the low maintenance uh, no, it was totally uh, interview fine. guy. Thank you. You've been listening to the AP show. My name is Jason Pettigrew. Go out, turn now, turn the computer off, go out, hang out with your friends and and go make some mixtapes or something. <laughs> See ya. The AP show.